So, today we're going to be taking a look at the Daydream view, and hopefully this is recording my mic. So, this is the tutorial that you go through when you use it. Yep. And it'll take you step by step through the process of learning how to use uh, the headset and everything. And right now, the um, it's in the left and the center. Waterfall appears in front of you. There you go. Yeah, pretty much everything that um, you see in this is um, very, very vivid 3D. And they really try to um, nail home one thing. And it uh, I think it's a bug with the uh, whatever it uses for orientation, the orientation sensor in this. It might be the gyroscope. It might be um, the compass, I've heard some people say. But um, they really try to drill in that you need to be recentering your headset quite a bit. And um, that's because it will drift off center sometimes. But it's not that bad if you uh, make it a habit to play the daydream in, um, in a normal office chair that you could spin around in, as you can see I'm doing here. Now, compatibility with, uh, you know, different types of uh, glasses and stuff, because I'm, I'm, I wear glasses, I have uh, a prism in my glasses, because I have, I don't, I don't even know what to call it, it's like my lazy eye just kind of like floats sometimes. It will, um, uh... It's not like a fixed point in which it likes to give me double vision. But with this, I, I haven't had any problems with uh, being able to focus and see depth and everything. In fact, I think uh, using VR was the first time that I might have uh, actually seen depth in real life. I think I might not actually have depth perception, is what I'm trying to say. Which is strange to realize through uh, VR. I might be wrong. Oh, too much. Come on. A little bit. I want to hit the boat. Oh, too far. Yeah. Oh, look at that little stock sound. Her uh, flipper there. One thing that I've gotten into recently with this um, daydream view 
is uh, getting it to work with Steam VR using a program called Ridge or Riftcat. And uh, it works pretty well. Uh, mind you, there are no um, motion controllers for this besides the touchpad, which is not integrated with that software just yet. Now, if there's any stuttering at all throughout this video, it's because of other things going on, on my phone. I don't have anything else running in the background. I don't run Facebook, but it could be that. It's been pretty good about uh, managing things. I mean, I have the Pixel, pretty top of the line there. You know, kind of like, this is what they tested this with kind of thing. Um, and it could be the video recording software that I'm using. So let's check out a couple of the built-in games because they're a little bit easier to um, demonstrate here. Now, I haven't played a lot of these on this. I was using um, my father's Pixel XL for a while so it doesn't have like all my crap saved on here. So I'll just play something like this where I could jump right into um, and have this video exported as soon as possible because of extra heat generation. Okay, so some programs you have to move your phone to do like a quick little click. It's just asking me to allow a thing. And the cool thing about the this is the whole um, The fact that it uses an NFC chip, I forgot to click it, an NFC chip and I think a magnet or something to automatically align um, the eyes for you and it works pretty well. Why hello there stranger! So, let's just get into a race here. Okay, sorry about the audio cutout there. The audio during this whole part was really screwed up because of how loud the racing was. But um, I believe I was uh, talking, uh, I was getting to talking about um, comparisons to, you know, desktop VR solutions. Um, and uh, the fact that with this and... Um, you know, proper router or using a USB type C cable and all that business. I can basically stream. It's streaming. It's streaming video. My Steam VR or Vive uh, games to my headset and play it wirelessly with wireless headphones. And all I need is a motion controller with this setup and I'm set because you don't call, count the cow uh, count the cost of the phone in this everybody has a phone who wants a phone who needs a phone so that doesn't add to the cost you get you know the daydream or you wait for the next release of uh, the daydream view and you're set you could do desktop VR without going out and spending um, like 800 bucks on a desktop uh, HMD, uh, HMD device. Uh, I guess the only drawback, like I said, is the motion controllers and any possible latency issues. But then get a long USB Type-C cable connected to your phone or upgrade your router. That's what I did. And not for this. I upgraded it for other reasons. And I have no problem considering my router is right next to me. Uh, because my desktop's, desktop is wired. So uh, what you could be looking forward to in my next video where I'm going to be covering VR content is I'm going to figure out the best way to present to you 
um, using the Riftcat or Vridge software with my Pixel and Daydream View. And uh, I have to come up with some of the more just sit there and watch the scenery go by things because or games that let me use mouse and keyboard along with it. I don't tend to get motion sick. Um, so mouse and keyboard disjointedness doesn't seem to affect me. But I'll try to do the scenery-based ones. There's a couple um, that are pretty neat. So uh, look out for the next video in the next uh, couple days here while I sort out how to record it. And uh, see you in the next one.